Welcome to episode three and day three of the Five Star Potential Podcast Social, uh, your daily podcast throughout uh, lockdown. As always, today we've got uh, my co-host, guest. We're going to be talking about lockdown and life in general. I uh, hope you guys are keeping well, keeping safe. Uh, as always, thanks for the support on the first two days. And as always, if you've you've got any thoughts on the podcast or want to ask us any questions, let us know in the comment section on YouTube. But we'll kick off with my co-hosts today we've got uh, friday night fm joe how's things all good mate you all right all good how's your day long long working yeah up the black friday it's full of the uh that's the 27th mate I thought you'd know about it <laughs> brilliant dupe yes david i'm i'm well mate i'm well busy one as well um uh no i dolly pardoned it today mate what a way to Just make a living, nine till five, mate. Yeah. That's all I did. I'm good. And a cheeky stream as well to finish off the day. Yeah, man. Love a cheeky stream, mate. You know me. Almost done, mate. Almost done. And uh, our guest for today is none other than Mr. Tony Jameson. Tony, how's it going, man? Very well, very well. Thank you for having us. How about yourselves? All good, man. All good. Hey. Grand. Yeah. Good to have you on. Obviously, we had you on the five-star potential, the football manager edition. Uh, it was good to get you on here. Obviously, talk about life. Um, we spoke a little bit, obviously, about your career and so on in that uh, in the last podcast, but obviously we can dive into it a little bit more today as well. Um, mm-hmm. As always, guys, obviously listening as well. Um, if you're ever struggling with your mental health, obviously this is what this podcast is all about, really. Um, there are always links in the description down below, or I'm sure all of us will be happy to talk if uh, there's ever anyone that you guys want to talk to as well. Uh, so we are always here. But lockdown is a difficult time for some of us. And, and, and Tony, we're going to be talking about the last lockdown, this upcoming one. Saturday, when Boris announced it, what were your sort of initial thoughts straight away? Um, To be honest, like... If we go back to the, to the first lockdown, like I've been, um, I was meant to be off work because uh, I've, I've got a bit of asthma, nothing major, but like me and a, another lad who, who works with us, uh, he's quite asthmatic as well. So we were, were chatting in the first instance about this whole, right, we're going to be sent away for three months, like, you know, don't go in the office and all that sort of stuff. And then everyone else like, oh, we're going to have like three weeks off and that and they're going to go back and it's going to be fixed. And it's like, right, fine. And of course, you know, eight months or whatever yeah. it is, like here we are again. And then Saturday, as you said, it just... It, it felt like that thing of going like we kind of all maybe knew in the back of our heads that it wasn't going away mm-hmm. but to sort of be told like right yeah there's another month and you instantly go they don't mean a month this is like another a bit longer and it's like it's just that thing of there is no end in sight and I guess we do have to start living with COVID yeah but what does that look like and it is that thing of going right it's been Groundhog Day since the end of March. That's fine when it was all nice and spring, summer and spring and we're all doing Joe Wicks and eating <laughs> banana bread and, you know, touching our elbows and shit. But <laughs> now it's like, right, it's going to start getting it's gonna start getting wet and dreary and cold and dark. And I think this is, this is the time when, you know, people are going to be really feeling it. And, and stuff like this is great, man. Like you guys have really, really sort of hit the nail on the head and go, right, look, there were some people who were really struggling with it when it was, as I say, when it was all fun and jolly in summer, but now we're getting into like, winter. It's like, yeah, I think there's going to be some people who are going to find this really, really tough. So, yeah, I think it did sort of just hit uh, a bit like, oh, so just, yeah, it's, it's going to be another, like, it's going to be a year. Like, in March, it's going to be a year. <laughs> like, you can't even, if, if we just said in March, that would be the situation. You'd have been like, no chance, no chance. Like you say, though, it was like during the, the weather towards that start of lockdown, obviously through to summer, it was like glorious. Like everyone, if, if you had obviously a garden, it was like, you know, it was, everyone was, it was outside. It was a summer holiday, wasn't it? Literally, yeah, fair. it was like, yeah, yeah everyone loved it. Yeah, like, like, like people getting sort of like furloughed from work and that. Like they were, granted, like it, it's not ideal getting furloughed at all. Like I was quite fortunate that my company have kept me on all the way through. So I've not had to struggle with that in that respect. So that, that's one problem I've not had to deal with. Whereas some people obviously got, you know, job problems to deal with as well. But, you know, you're right. Lovely summer and that. Like I could have, I could do like, you know, go in lunchtime, get like some weights out and stuff, do a workout in the garden. Lunchtime, come back and be like, oh, I'm going to go for a shower and I'll go and log back on when I get ready to it. And there's no stress. Whereas now you sort of, life is, you get up, you log on, you do your thing and you're, you're clock watching again. So it's like, 
a really weird shift in dynamic. And I think we were always saying at the time, yeah, it's fine when it's sunny, but what happens when it's locked down and it's rain and it's not quite the same thing? And I think we're now going to start experiencing that and, and we will see a massive difference, I think. I said that to the lads the other day. I said, you can tell the difference already. We've, you mentioned Joe Wicks. He'd done an Instagram post. He was like, well, I suppose I'd better do that again. And he's like, he's gone to three day weeks instead of doing it doing it every day again. And I was just like, even his attitude towards it, he got an MBE. And now he's like, ah, oh, can't be asked. <laughs> Yeah, mate, yeah, matey boy, Captain to- Captain Tom's got his fucking trainers back out again, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> got his ice boots out this time. Yeah. Oh fuck! He's, got... <laughs> he's got he's got eight hundred thousand miles to do now. This time he's <laughs> pissed off. Got the antifreeze out for his fucking <laughs> Zimmer frame. Yeah. Oh fuck! You know, no, no, no one's going to go clapping in the fucking rain. Either, let's be honest. <laughs> just, You're on your own this time, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> The problem yeah. is, you go clap in the rain, you get cold, you sneeze, you cough, and everyone thinks you got COVID. So you, you, it's a vicious circle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you say sort of office work, Tony. Like, if you don't mind me asking, what what sort of work are you in at the moment? Yeah. So so basically, like we we touched upon it on the last podcast. I'll sort of fill people in. Like, so my background is is I'm a stand up comedian, um, but since we moved, so we moved down to York about five years ago. Um, and the wife wanted um, wanted us to, to buy a house and to start a family. So self-employed wages aren't great for mortgages and kids and stuff. So uh, I, I started just doing a general office job and I, I now work in, in fraud investigation, which is wow. actually all right, to be honest. Yeah. It's um, it's pretty decent. Uh, it certainly takes the strain off the fact that there's no comedy circuit mm. now. Like I've got loads of mates who are well and truly up, up, uh, mm. up shit creek with that. Like Whereas for me, I'm sort of going, right, well, yeah, that's an income stream I can't get, but at least, you know, we've got a roof off our head, we've got food on the table, like the kids are looked after, the mortgage is covered. So again, it's it's one less trouble to have to deal with. Like I couldn't imagine being in the situation, you know, where, where self employed, like I know you're chatting um I think it was second yellow card, I think you had on on, on the other day, saying he'd just gone full time content creation at the start of lockdown. You're just like, Oh, like that's the worst time to be doing this. Like but <laughs> But like, yeah, so for self-employed people, I, don't, I think they've really had a, a, a rough deal with it. But yeah, so I got that and that's kind of been like handy in a way to keep my head relatively straight in the fact that it's routine. But at the same time, it's sort of, I'm spending a lot of time in the house. Like everyone says, oh, you know, working from home, but I don't know who said it, but there's that also thing of going, well, actually, are you living at work now? So that's mm. the sort of the yeah. trade off really like so we spent maybe what three months i think working on the dining room table um with, with the boys running around should have so got ikea like, one mate they're a bit quicker <laughs> <laughs> Mate, <laughs> you know, really, like, it was it was it was ridiculous man like we've got we've got a two-year-old running around who obviously would have been at nursery but the nursery was was closed unless yep. you were key workers so he's running around we've got we had a at the time he would have been eight months old ish maybe even a little bit younger so he's like just getting used to what's going on. Um, he's now one, so we were sort of having to change his room was getting built up. So any chance I had of an office was changed with, with with the second kid. So all that sort of been spinning around. Then eventually we said, "Oh look, you know you're going to be working from home essentially until next year." So it was like, right, let's just move everything upstairs. I can't be sat on the table now. I've got to just come and get into a headspace where it is, you know nine to five and and i go upstairs i go to work and it's back down and you know that's great i can switch off for eight hours six hours or whatever it is but then you go straight back down and it's like you're straight back down into dad mode and that's like full on because you can hear that they've had a day and a half downstairs <laughs> so that's like a whirlwind going on you're like right so that'll be fine get them sorted settle down then start doing all you know youtube and, and podcasts and mm. stuff and then it's bedtime and then you're back up and it's groundhog day again and you're like not been out of the house in like three weeks like oh then it starts to hit you that you've not been out of the house in three weeks and you're like oh i've just been covering all this up haven't i like and that's sort of where we are now i think so i did a i did a i had to do a week at home because of uh, one of my little one I had to have a test I went to wait for the results and i i don't i don't like my commute because it's a long straight road it's a bit boring it adds pressure because there could be traffic until I had to work from home and my commute was 
you know, two flights of stairs um downstairs to you know you get a time to unwind and it sounds really selfish i have an hour a day just to myself in a car uh, and a podcast mm -hmm. it's just you can't buy that time as a parent like it's amazing <laughs> it's seriously amazing um but More yeah i mean that's tough did the test come back Was, is he yours uh he's not uh, he's 50 percent postman <laughs> um but I, I think it's amazing you've gone from a very you know well you, comedian to a very now like a, a a serious job of fraud. I mean, well, that's a hell of a U-turn. <laughs> I was, I was thinking. I was like, he's sitting at a kitchen table, and it's like, oh yeah, sorry, you've had like your credit card, you know, stolen, and they've spent loads of money. Get a crayon out your ass. <laughs> 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 Mate, to, to be honest, I, I was making those phone calls anyway, but yeah. like, at least I'm not getting paid for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah. I've been working but, on this yeah, joke all day, love. Uh, can I just run it past you? Yeah, I know you've got 15 grand that's been taken out of your account, but I think this is a, this is going to win joke of the year. Wow. Well, fucking Doris, she's not happy. Karen. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so go, but, go on, Tony, sorry. I was, I was going to say, like, like, dude, you're right, man, about that, that decompression time with the commute from, from work to, to home. Like, it's just... That is an absolute game changer, and, and you like. I mean, my my commute was maybe like only sort of twenty minutes or whatever. But you're right, like an hour. Like comedy was, you could have like a four hour decompression mm -hmm. from driving wherever you're going to be, do your show, then drive all the way back. Um, and like I think that there's been sort of a lot of parallels with with, with comedy and, and with with content creation, which I'm, I'm sure we'll chat about as as we go along. That whole thing of it's very insular, very very solo career. You're very like you've got to be happy in your own skin, which is great. But there's always a point when you go, just just quite like to chat to someone for a little bit, just see what they're up to, and you're sort of going, it's two o'clock in the morning. Is that a reasonable time to ring somebody? Probably not. So I'll just I'll just, uh, I'll just not bother. Yeah. yeah, I think so, man. It's amazing with my commute. It, it's it's an hour where it's it's half an hour there, half an hour back. Uh, unless when I phone her on the way home the kids are crying it's two hours on the way home <laughs> traffic's <laughs> mental isn't it I get on the M4 and I just drive temporary <laughs> just lights like, down okay, there where am I going to end yeah. up yeah <laughs> so sort of lockdown one Tony when that like, obviously was announced and mm -hmm. I assume you were sort of working from home straight away how did you cope with that like the transition from normal everyday life to that like how was that how did you cope with that <sighs> Um, I think that that was probably looking back. I think I did. I think it was all right. Like I, I, I quite like working from home now. I think I've got used to it. I think it, it works for me. Like I looked at it as a positive of going. Like I've got the boys. I can see them grow up. I essentially, I essentially had paternity leave. Mm. Really, like, yeah. like so. Yeah. Like the wife was on maternity anyway. So I got to spend all that time that as she did. And I got to see the boys grow up in a way that I would never have done had I been either at work or, or gigging or, or whatever. So for that sense, I'd, in my initial mindset was going, this is great. Like, this is really, really great. I've been given a, a fantastic opportunity. Like, I'll do my work. I'll do whatever I can do. And obviously everyone sort of, in the first instance, was kind of cutting some slack with everybody. Like, you know, no one was expecting things to be business as usual because no one knew what to expect. So I think we all kind of had a bit more sort of looseness there. So it was, that's quite good fun. And then after a while, it started to be like, look, I just need to, I need a bit of quiet. Like I can't have the kids running around. I need to make a phone call. I need to do this, I need to do that. Being chased for stuff. And I'm like getting a bit wound up with myself. And at that point, you're sort of trying to spin too many plates and, and juggle stuff. And you're like, oh, I don't want to go back to the office, but I just, I could do with like another room where I could work from. And that's obviously hence when we started to move upstairs. And I was like, that's maybe better, but... At that point, we were in for the long haul, so your mindset has changed again as to like, all right, I'm, I, this is me for a year, essentially, or, or at least eight months, and, and you know, your life changes and in, in how you focus changes, but, like, it started off as, as I say, it started off as just, oh, this is really different, and now it's like, yeah, this is the norm, you know, it's fine. Like, if I can get outside, brilliant, but, like, it's just, it's not really possible at the minute. Like it is, but it's like it's not. You sort of, I don't know, like, like I don't know if you guys feel the same, but like, you you, you know that your wife's been downstairs looking after the kids all day. You've been at work. You don't want to come downstairs. Like, look, love, can I just have half an hour, go for a run or whatever, and just 
chill out or go and lift some weights in the garage. She's like, no, you fucking can't. Like, yeah. I've been dealing with this all day. Like, you, you're getting straight in and, and you're like, all right, fine, like, whatever. And you jump in on it and you, that little window that you just need, as you say, that decompression of you'd usually commute or you'd, you'd walk to work or you'd drive or you'd have, like, a bit, you've got the gym straight after work or whatever and that's your routine. That's all gone. Like, there's just no, there's no routine now. Like, like we can be up at five in the morning with the boys if, like, you know, they sort of get up early you're like, they're booting off, and you're like, sort of looking at your watch, going, I'll start work at 10. Mm. Got five <laughs> hours of this before, like, anything, and then yeah, I've boss, got to do it all overtime? day. Like, yeah, I'll be in yeah. early today, lads. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think that that was the bit that I was sort of, I've, that's the bit I found a bit more difficult going, like, when you when you have that huge amount of time to, to light, to do life, and then, uh, then you have to jump into work, that's, uh, that's a bit of a difficult one. There he is. <laughs> we lost you there for a second. <laughs> Sorry, my, my camera. I think, I think my, my employer's watching. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. got, I was going to say, so obviously you're on about that time. So what have you ever, like, you're on about going outside. Do you ever try and go on walks, go on runs? Obviously, I see on your Instagram, you're into sort of the gym stuff. Like, is, is that what you do sort of in your spare time? Like, you know, to try and keep yourself active and fit. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, like, my, my thing, sort of, I, I bang into CrossFit is, is sort of my, my physical, um, you know, in, enjoyment. Mm-hmm. So we figured, like, for lockdown one, we were quite fortunate that the, that the gym that I go to um, hired, out, hired out all the kit. So, like, they figured that we were going to be locked down for a while. So rather than having everything in the gym, you know, it's quite theft attractive. Let's hire it all out to the members, keep everyone fit. So I, you know, would get a barbell get some plates and stuff and i'd go and train in the house or in the garden or in the garage um because all fitness gear was just crazy expensive mm-hmm. over the summer um when uh when plates and barbells start coming back in stock me and the wife had a chat and we said look you know what do you want to do should we just should we just bite the bullet and just buy it and it's in the house anyway like she likes weightlifting so i was like look let's just do it like it's been a crap year treat ourselves to it you know, and so we've, so we've now got a setup in the garage where we've got a squat rack, we've got barbells, we've got plates and stuff. And we're like, right, just that's fine. So at least it's there. So I can go at six in the morning, right, I'm going down, I'm throwing some weights around or I'm going to go for a run or uh, like she goes out with the boys for a walk during the, during the day, which is like great because she's got another couple of mates who are on maternity as well. So they get out and they do their social side of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll maybe go for a run or whatever just to try and clear my head. But um but yeah, that just sort of all depends upon how everything is downstairs. Like I sort of, because I've been given this time to see the to see the boys grow up, I, I feel as I'm more dad mode, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Like I know I'm dad yeah. mode anyway, but but I, I instantly feel like I'm. It's heightened now that I can't really sort of go and take an hour or two because I feel that's more selfish to be like going right. Well, I've got to do that because you've got to deal with it later on anyway. So maybe I'll sort of like almost cut out some of my time um but you know that's just what it is it's 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 a pass like it'll you'll it'll come back and i'll be have a time when i can go back and do five days a week six days a week seven days a week or whatever but you know for now i'm like i'll just do what i can do and that's fine um but i have managed to put two and a half stone on so that's it's not ideal (laughs) you know a a bulking season's already just started so i I, I, I dropped dropped the I dropped a stone and a half at the start of lockdown. I was like, this is going to be brilliant. I'm going to get like all lean and ripped and that. And then I uh, I put it all back on and some more. So I'm now the heaviest I've ever been. I blame the eat out, uh, eat out, help out scheme yeah. for yeah, a lot man. of things and, and my weight. Yeah. Also, yeah. yeah, just eat. Yeah, I blame just eat too. Blame it, bro. Domino's, man. They keep telling. They keep telling you it's like half price, and you're like, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's definitely it half price." So, so I need two of those. <laughs> you gotta Doom's do. Like, uh, nodding okay. his head. He's like, yeah, "Fuck." <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with that. Right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you lockdown tip number three because we always do lockdown tips. Um, if you like your Domino's, right, this is the best hack you can ever get. I, I already know what he's gonna say. Yeah. It's worth it though, I've, Dave, I've, right? I've, I've got a hack. If it's the same, if it's the same one, that's brilliant. If not, I've got a hack for you. Go on. Good. Have you got a George Foreman machine? No, no. Okay, you're on a different thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's hey, go for that's, it. Do you know what? No, <laughs> you're a fake fatty, all right? You're a fake fatty. You got fat because of lockdown. I was born fat. Okay. George Foreman machine, cold bit of pizza in, right? 
the dipping sauce, mm -hmm. just drizzle it on a bit of pizza, oh. put another bit of pizza on top, shut the George Foreman machine, have a fucking field day with that one. Mm -hmm. Which way do you put, you put it like uh, toppings, like upside down, right? Yeah, yeah. toppings together. Like a sandwich. No, I put it side by side and just... Uh, no, you know. Like, <laughs> toppings have, in. Yeah, like a sandwich. So it, 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 yeah. A pizza sandwich, Ooh. mate. Tony I feel, I feel he's, he's literally there going, uh, hey Siri, can you order me a Domino's, please? <laughs> I, 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 I almost feel as though no, my, my Domino's fuck. hack's a bit rubbish now. Go on. Like, go on, share. Yeah, uh, my... my well, I mean, again, you probably know it, but like, if you go on, on your app and that, on your order, you can substitute whatever you want, can't you? Yeah. On your pizza. So you can take off vegetables for the same price as meat. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just get rid of red <laughs> onions and Joe? put more chicken on there. Like, yeah. No? <laughs> Joe is famous at Subway. Have you not heard this? Why? <clears throat> All right. Go on, Joe, tell us. No, well, this is like you saying that in Football Manager, you because you can now have mixed... Um, goals and assist bonuses. Dude, yep. was like, I've been saying that for years, so that's why they put it in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, right. I said Subway now have a meat feast sub on their menu, and that's what I was telling Dupe and Herb and everyone to have last year. It's oh, now on their menu. Have it. So I'm taking full credit for it. Claim to fame. What's that? Italian name? BMT. Absolutely. With Italian meatball, BMT with meatballs. With meatballs. Meatballs the one knowing it. From Subway. Look at his face. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> right. Hey Siri, where's the closest you know, you know, Subway? <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, not, I'm joking. You know when you asked. <laughs> You know when you asked how lockdown, you know when you asked how lockdown two was gonna go. Yeah. It's gonna go mint in it. Yeah. It's gonna be the best. <laughs> Do you want to hear my? K I'll tell you. What, I'll leave the KFC hack till tomorrow. I, was, I, I get, um, get two two Greg's festive bakes, right? <laughs> oh, I'm I'm third festive bake on a dual grill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Um, I don't know if this is a thing. Apparently, like you know when. Um, if you order like cookies and that from Domino's, if you wait until you go to check out and it comes up at the bottom, why don't you add yeah, these? Yeah, they're half order? price. They're like cheaper, aren't half they? Half price. Yeah, yeah two ninety nine. Yeah. yeah, they do the Terry's chocolate orange uh, do um, cookies at the moment. They're, right. they're good. Yeah, yeah. they're all right. Yeah. They're all right. We had them the other day. Yeah. Yeah, if you go, if you go McDonald's and you get a triple cheeseburger, ask for Big Mac sauce. That's a game changer. Like, Tony's Ooh, got his okay. notepad out. Yeah, he's loving it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This has been the best podcast I've been on ever. Right? Just like... um, if you if you tell KFC you're a student, <laughs> I've been a student for a while. They offer uh, you a job. <laughs> you, get, you get some extra hot wings. <laughs> That's good. Don't ask for your card though. Yeah. No. No. Uh, yeah. Probably not at this time. Yeah, yeah, this time probably half the people that work at KFC can't read anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Which is why I worked there. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Up the fast food tips. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I think that's yeah. it now. So, I how, how, uh, yeah, so how have you guys found, found lockdown too then? Has it sort of come out of... Like, has it come as a surprise? Or are you guys expecting it? Or is it like... Do you feel... Like we said at the start, like, does it feel different already? Uh, I've been quite angry about it, to be honest, because I think it's just all bollocks. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been quite because I agree with with a lockdown. If that if but if that's the best way to do it, they need to do it properly. Yeah. Not not have yeah. schools there. Like I understand the economy needs to keep going and things like that. But what's the point in doing a lockdown for half the people? Or going, we're going to close gyms, which affect people's mental health. Like they go there, like you said, it's just that you know half hour an hour. You can you know people use that and it helps them. They're closing that. They're closing pubs, you know. Yet, but you can go to work and be sitting next to someone all day. What's what's the fucking mm. difference if you've got a pint in your hand, you know? And it's just things like that. It just annoys me that they do it half-assed. And then, like you say, oh, it's four weeks. Well, the last one was four weeks, and it's only at seven months. Mm. So I just yeah. don't. I don't see us moving forward here unless they actually go right. It's like fucking Louis Walsh lockdown, <laughs> you know? and it's. You just need to kind of go, everybody does it for a certain amount of time. And it's, you know, instead of just fucking dishing out money here, left, right and centre to different businesses and all that. Because to me, it just feels like the Tory government fucking ruining the economy so all their rich mates can buy everything when it's dirt cheap. Mm. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. And you're no right. Like, it, it has to have, it, it has to have like, full, full buy-in from everybody. Like, it's got to have full buy-in from everybody. And I think the problem was with, with lockdown one, which, you know, you're right now bleeds into lockdown two like lockdown fatigue happened really quickly like people got bored of it because they either didn't know what was going on like when they started easing restrictions everyone went what the fuck does it mean like we can mm. as you say we, we can go to the pub but we can't see our mam like what's yeah. that makes no sense like right so the kids can go to school and i can go to work but i still can't go and see a member of my own family like 
no, that, that's nonsense. Like, and now they're like, all right, well, if we do this, then you can have Christmas. Like, come on. Like, we're they're adults. dangling the carrot. They're they? us like adults. Yeah, they're showing the carrot. Yeah, of like, course. This is like, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and the problem is, like, when lockdown one fell slap bang at the start of Eid. So mm. everyone had already travelled for all that, and the families were all there, and yeah. and then they were told that they couldn't do it. And you're now going, oh, well, you're just going to have Christmas. Like, it's just... It has to be a complete. It has to be consistency, and it's got to go. Look, it's got to be like this because you balls it up the last time. Like you did, we did, everyone did. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't know it was going to happen. Like, and just take some ownership. And go, got it wrong. We got it wrong. Sorry, we didn't know what we were doing. We locked down too early. We came out of restrictions too quickly. It's it's come and bitten us on the arse. So, sorry, we all have to go back in again. But if we do it properly this time, then there's a better chance that we won't have to do it again. And well, I, I, there's a generational issue as well. Like you can see how yeah. governments and you know, like let's say the police, for instance, that people just have no respect for them. They've got mm-hmm. no power to do anything. So when it comes to something like Christmas, there is absolutely no way that they're going to go. Do you know, what? I'm going to stay indoors because of Christmas. Of course, you're going to go and see your family. You just everyone's just going to tip and bollocks. They're better off going. Yeah, it's a four week lockdown. And then we we start again January the first. Yeah, you know? yeah, and at, and, at, and at that point, you then got people going and uh, just instantly taking the mick out of it, going, yeah. "Oh, does coronavirus want Christmas off as well?" And yeah. it's like, yeah, because that's literally where we're at. We're we're having to fill in the blanks. Like, yeah. you know, we joked on that, right? Lockdown's happening, but it's not happening for another week or so. All right, well, if lockdown's happening, do it now. Like, what's another week gonna do? Like, well, it's like you go in a restaurant yeah. and you you must wear a mask when you walk around in a restaurant, but as soon as you mm-hmm. sit down, you can't catch corona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's mental. It's like, it's just, yeah, it's mental. I mean, for me, it feels no different. I'm at work. Uh, it just, it, it's yeah, the only difference is, is, is tonight. I finished streaming. I walked downstairs. I said, all right, babe. So, what's the plan for tomorrow? She's like, we literally can't do anything. Ah, okay, fine. So it means I got yeah. to sit upstairs, watch football, and play football manager. Yeah, fine, but, no problem. Yeah, that'd um, that'd that, that's a normal Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I wouldn't talk for everybody. But I. I I've worn a mask the whole time. Like everywhere I go, every shop mm-hmm. I go, yep. I always wear a mask. I don't give a fuck if you believe in it or you don't believe in it. I just do it because they've asked you to do it and you just kind yep. of go, it doesn't take anything to just wear a mask. right? But you find yourself, like people coming into my dad's shop, not wearing a mask and you end up wanting to knock them out. Mm-hmm. And it's like they've bred this fucking into you because like, you know, a year ago, I couldn't give a fuck if someone wore a mask and stood near me. Now you look at, you look at people and you go, you're not wearing a mask and you think you're scum. What are you doing? Like, and they've instilled that into you, and it's like, oh, it just it frustrates me because you get ang- you get angry, and there is that anxiety as well. Like, you know, you'd be walking around a supermarket, you feel kind of a bit anxious going into the supermarket anyway, yeah. because and and then when you see people walking around not wearing masks, and you're like, really, like, just do your bit. Like, even if it doesn't work, at least you're, at least you're doing it. You're not making yourself look like a bit of a tit by going. Oh, I'm just going to walk in there without one. Yeah, I, I completely get you, man. Like, I, I had to go and get some bits yesterday from Sainsbury's, and part of me was going, it's it's lockdown day one, mm. like, looking around going, I don't think everyone's got the memo yet. Like, yeah. it's still reasonably busy. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm masked up. Like, you say there, you're walking around, you're a bit on edge anyway, because, like, everyone's just forgotten that social yeah. distancing isn't a thing anymore because you've got a trolley, and then it's walking past you. And I'm, I'm stood in the queue, like, to, to pay... And someone who works for Sainsbury's was right up behind me. I'm like, hang on, like, you know you're meant to be, <laughs> yeah. like, two metres away, right? Like, you're the person who's meant to tell other people off for being properly up in people's faces. Like, get back, get a move on. Like, you're right. I, I think the people now, there's, the, we're split down the middle of people who want the further lockdown and, and want it like a hard lockdown, like proper everyone's, nobody is outside at all. And then there's the other half of people which don't give a fuck anymore. Like, it's just, like, they either don't believe it's happening or they've just lost all faith in the system. And I can understand it. I'm not saying I agree with it. I can understand it. And, it would, and because we're now that, that, that polarising uh, opinions that I can't see this lockdown working. I really can't. I agree. I agree. I, I have to agree. I, I cannot see... Uh, there's a spike in September when the kids go to school, went back to school, and we then do a lockdown and we keep the kids in school. Like you're talking about Sainsbury's, a guy behind you, I bet, I bet he didn't have a mask on because for some reason, when you if you work at Sainsbury's and wear their uniform, you you can't you can't get Corona. A bit like you know all the supermarkets. Mm-hmm. Why are they not wearing masks in their store? What what is the what is the 
If you work in a shop, you don't have to wear it. But if you go in to do shopping, you have to wear it. Well, a lot of them... I like, don't understand that. A lot of them, it's like, if they're on the checkout, and a lot of them do have, like, the Perspex screen and stuff, they yeah, don't wear that's it. Fine. But well, if they're on the shop floor, they should 100% be wearing it. Like if people just want, yeah. You know, if, if if Joe, I have to admit, it frustrates the hell out of me because I've had to wear it since since March. You know. But this, but the same thing is like, obviously, I understand a lot of people. Well, there are people exempt. There are there are people that I've seen without masks that I think I look at. I know you can't tell, but you look at it and you think you're definitely not exempt. Like you should just be wearing a mask. But I think there should be some sort of law. Even just to wear a visor, even if even if you're not exempt. I know they say it doesn't do you know as much as a mask, maybe, but it's still something, isn't it, to to help? I've seen people wear visors. Older people wear visors because they know they can't wear masks. I think that should be implemented somewhere as well. But yeah. it's just, I mean, it's, I mean, it's the anxiety, the bit of it, mm. because it makes you anxious when you see people like it. And like you say, there are people that you know have breathing difficulties. You know, like you were saying, saying like you got asthma. Yeah. Like this, really, you could be one of them people that wears their little flower, saying that you don't have to wear a mask if you, you know, if you wanted to. But I don't know. It's just it's the whole thing that no one like. I want to believe that coronavirus is a thing, but there's just so many things that are going against it. When they're they're doing all their their, their numbers and they're saying it's how many COVID and flu cases there are, so like they're they're just falsifying numbers by adding the flu in there. Then they're saying if you if you have a positive corona test and you died, it, you could be a heart attack, but they'll say it's COVID related. If that in the like, last month, for it, this well, all yeah. sounds like bollocks, yeah. and I really want to believe it. And I'll I'll continue to toe the line. I'll do I'll do what I have to do. Because that's what we've been asked to do, and I kind of think I've got the respect to do that. It doesn't mean I, I kind of believe in it. It's, it all feels a little bit murky to me. But mm. again, it makes it makes me angry. And I'm not an angry person, but this all this really? shit makes me feel very angry. <laughs> yeah, there's one one thing I, I would ask. Though. A friend of mine asked me this the other the other night, and I and I yeah, his answer really surprised me. He says, "Do you know anyone who's personally had COVID?" Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, at my work, we've had five five cases. Yeah. Yeah, we know like, that I, one of them is in. But, but, is, but what is it? It's the flu. Yeah, well, one of them is in is in hospital at the moment uh, mm. for my work because of because of it. But, yeah, but you can get the flu and get pneumonia. Yeah, yeah. Like this is the thing they make these tests. Like not being funny, they made a track and trace thing that didn't fucking work. They could make a test that. What are they testing for? Mm. You know, and it's only got to be well. One of the symptoms is like the flu, and it says you're positive. You know, it wouldn't put. You know, I wouldn't put it against them to have a fucking test that just says you're positive if you've got a flu. Mm. This is this is the thing, and like when you say about the COVID thing, that's that's a massive thing that I know people. I I, I know two people that are extended family that have passed away in lockdown, and they've said it's COVID. But then my granddad died in January, and they said it was of an uh, enlarged heart problem. But he literally seven days before been in had an operation on his heart, and which wasn't wasn't the problem. You know, and it's just like they and they went, oh, oh, we need to look into that. And they went back and they come back and said it was something else that was a cause of death. And you're like, so if they're fucking out there, and then they just go every time someone dies if they've got a positive test, they just say it's COVID related. It's it's like scaremongering. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I get that. I mean, like, the, the the lad that I know that, that caught it, he's a he's a doctor in Glasgow, but he's like he's like like he was one of a crossfitter as well. He was in there for like five days or something, six days, and he wow. came out and he's still knackered. Like, and we're talking. April or something, and obviously, like you know, for yourself, like you know, sorry to hear that what you've been through is it's awful. Like, but you're right when you got people who are talking saying that they've not heard of anybody that's got it. They're the ones who are going, well, is it real? And, and yourself, there, you, you've got experience of, of of you know issues that are potentially connected to the virus, yeah. and and even and even you're sort of on the fence now, going, I'm not, I'm not sure. I believe it's like it's it's mad in it that we've been that long and with that distrusting of society now and, and governments and you know that we don't know what's true and what's not true like we because we can fact check everything these days like we 20 years ago if this had happened we'd just have to take it on the chin and go that's what it is because we can't fact check it quickly yeah like now it's like i don't think i think that's bollocks I don't, let me have a quick <laughs> check of that like you're calling it you're calling it the bullshit out straight away like you know i think that's a difficult thing that we've I mean, got now where you're instantly questioning it i think the thing is as well it's, it's it's a weird thing to say but like everyone's got a platform now so you have a tin foil hat moment you can jump on twitter you can jump on all these social media things kind of spout what you believe which is fair enough you know that's what it's all for but that can get a lot of traction you know 
Mm-hmm. Um, it works the other way though. It gives you a, you it gives you the ability to fucking call bullshit on things. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's it's, it's also very difficult though. Like with as social media is is, is probably the, you know the the main issue here. Yeah. Like if you're feeling a bit oh I don't know how I feel about it. Like I'm a bit anxious. Am I like you just need a bit of positivity that day. Mm-hmm. You know, the second you open your phone, that's the day when it's all just a, a shit storm of nonsense. And you're like, it's just gonna get, it's just gonna grind you down. Like, or there's just, there's just constant in it. Like, it's just twenty four seven. It's, it's all the time, all the time. And big, there's nothing else to talk about because no one's doing anything. You know, so it is that thing of going. It's always there. You're gonna have someone's yeah. gonna post a rant about what they think and they're going, oh, I think it's all nonsense. I'm not wearing a mask because of this. Here's my facts as to how the government this, are lying. And that's, or, that's the uh, thing. That is exactly the thing, though. But I don't get all this anti-mask protesting thing. Like, it doesn't matter if you don't believe it. Like, I'm, like I say, I'm not, I don't really want to get into it too much because, but it's like, if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. Just toe the line. Do what they say because ultimately that is what they're paid to do. Have mm-hmm. a bit of trust in them until, like, they get called out. But, like, as I say, I, I'll still... I'll still do everything. I still, you know, I still socially distance. I'll still wear a mask everywhere. I'm literally, I'm sanitising the fucking shop every ten minutes. So every time someone touches a card machine, I'm cleaning it and you know things like that. Like I'll still do it, even though I might not necessarily believe in it. But that's what they've asked you to to do. So toe the line, do the bit. If it's bullshit, you'd like to think it. They'll get called out on it. But you know, if it's not, and there will be lots of people, and probably listen to this, that have had people affected by COVID. And you know, if it is a thing, I'm you know, I just want them to get to the bottom of it because it's fucking, it's just boring, isn't it? Mm. Like I think there's there's a few things that that like I'll, I'll take some positives from it, as as, as weird as this is going to sound. Mm-hmm. Like so 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 if we sort of rewind back to um, just before we went into lockdown, like we were doing a we did a CrossFit competition uh, the weekend that Spain got put into lockdown. And I was, I was driving down to Leicester like every morning, listening to the radio and like listening to going, oh, so it's going into lockdown. And I'm like, this doesn't feel right. And like we're in this like aircraft hangar uh, and the competition went ahead and like there was proper like tension in the air. You could feel it as you walked in, like everyone's going, we shouldn't really be here. This feels like a bit, a bit naughty. And then like the first workout, we all, there's like a synchronized burpees. We all hit the floor at once. I looked up to my mate and I caught his eye and we both had that look in our eye going, well, if we've not caught it now, <laughs> then <laughs> like we've yeah. got it right at the start um, so so that happened and then like it was that thing of going right so right wash everything down wash everything down wash everything down like wash your kit and kind of going yeah we should have been doing that anyway like yes really like in a sense yes. you go go yeah why why do we just not wash stuff after we've used yeah. it I, th- like, I said this the other day exactly that yeah. it, it, it's it's taught you to be a cleaner society i think so yeah, a little bit. I was yeah, talking so yesterday. I think that's a the... massive positive. Sorry. Sorry about it. No, I was just talking yesterday about the eye test and like they were cleaning all the stuff down. I was like, did you do this pre? pre? No, no, we didn't. We didn't used to. So some, I put my chin and face exactly where somebody else. Yeah, yeah, but we never used to do it before pre, pre-COVID. Talking about positives, and let's, let's put a positive spin on this, right? Another positive from, from COVID is that I now don't have to sit in a barber's for two and a half hours waiting for a haircut. I can book appointments. Why was that never a thing before? Like The tax man, yeah. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you just you used to get up on a Saturday morning, I used to walk into town, grab a coffee, and I used to sit waiting and waiting and wait. Oh, then it's your turn. Now, oh, mate, that is one positive to take away from, from, from COVID-19. Yeah. All I, those I, barbers I, that I, are taking cash yeah. <laughs> now want, want their uh, government help. Yeah, this is how many people we're having every day. <laughs> Massive upturn since lockdown one. 76,000 punters every yeah. single day. <laughs> yeah, like, like I, I had, uh, when we went for our first haircut after lockdown and finished after lockdown one, I walked up and it, I had my mask on and, uh, and the barber, he's got his mask on and he says to me, he goes, you don't need the mask on. I was like, I know, but it's the first time I've been out of the house since lockdown, so I'm a bit like a bit yeah. twitchy. He's like, All right, cool. He's like, How are you getting your beard done? I was like, We're not doing the beard today. We'll come back in a few months. <laughs> Cause he's like Kurdish guy. Like he's like Kurdish guy, so he does the prop like beards and stuff, and I'm yeah, just like, yeah. 
we're not doing it. No, mm-hmm. I'm going to look not like today. a scruff for another yeah, few yeah. weeks. Like, I'll come back when I'm feeling braver. Thank you. So like, <laughs> you go in there, they're wearing the visors. They put all the all the gear around you now. It's all like sanitised. You're like, this is yeah. Sweeney Todd behaviour. Like, <laughs> 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 I've yeah. gone into a slaughterhouse, not a barber's. I was like, Dave's uh, gone. Dave's actually getting his hair cut live on stream, uh, live on pod tomorrow. Like, Dave. I mean, we haven't confirmed it, but I'm, I reckon it's all going to go. I reckon Did you? Um, just... be cut again. <laughs> Tony, I was just going to say, you, how was your COVID cut? Did you go? Did you go full shaven oh. head? No, no, no. So I didn't do that. I did get the I did get the wife to give me essentially an undercut, or but like an almost uppercut? like yeah. an uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> she, she gave me an up, an up, She gave me an upper crust pastry, uh, which was lovely. Um, <laughs> that's not a euphemism. <laughs> so yeah, no, we 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 managed to uh, to source some clippers, and I was having to try and explain to her like how to to sort of like do do a fade, and then like I got the kitchen scissors, and I just like chopped through and like thinned out the top. It, it didn't look too bad, but it was certain uh, like it's because I've got a lot of, a lot of hair and it's it's really thick and really heavy, so it needs constant attention. Otherwise, it just looks awful. And and I just started doing YouTube. I couldn't go on there with bloody <laughs> hair down all over the place. Like I've got I've got I've got I've got six viewers to try and please here. Come on, so it's tough though. Like with mine, I'm, I'm customer facing. You know, my, my clients on site every day. And mm-hmm. I can't go in with like I wear a baseball cap nine times out of ten or a snapback, you know. Um, and I just decided to shave it off. I mean, a bit of peer pressure from these two. I'm not gonna lie. I think Dave went first, then Joe, and I was like, no, I, I literally I went for the full fucking big. Yeah. Went straight off, and then Dave was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that." And Dave cut the sides. No, oh, I yeah. never, man. Never yeah. one. I think I did like grade then, two on the top at least. I literally, I literally two. come home one day, and like my hair was just like down to my nose. I was like, "I've had enough." That's me, so I went up to the bathroom. I just shaved it all off. I put a hat on, and I come downstairs. I was like, "Hey, look what Daddy's done!" Yeah. Oh shit! Like she was not impressed. Yeah, I remember <laughs> so when I, I was. I was Sorry, sorry. To, yeah, I remember when I had mine done, and my, I think my dad was loading up for work, and I went out to his van. I was like, "You right, Dad?" And he's like carrying on doing it. Like I'm just stood there with no hair. I'm like, "You right, Dad?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah. I got your coffee here. Yeah, cool." And then he's like, just look at me, like, and he looks up. He's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> the thing I, is, Dave. Like, I think people need to know this. There was a hairdresser in your house. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Charged yeah, too much, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, mean, I mean, yeah, you wonder that, and I've still got this trim at the moment, you know. So. Mate, it's a dead <laughs> trim, man. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I suggested like shaving all mine off, but the wife was like, "You're not doing it." And, and to be fair, I, I, I completely understand because I've got, I've got a ridiculously large head, <laughs> so it, would, it just would look wrong. Like I, I, need, I gave my, I, need I gave my two year old. To, I gave my mm. two-year-old a skinhead. My wife didn't talk to me for a week. Yeah. <laughs> I was I like, I'm sure mine. I can neaten this up a little bit. Zzz, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah. yeah I, the, the, little, the little one had, like, hair down yeah. to here. And he's, like, he did look like, he basically looked like, a, he looked like sort of proper 90s indie. <laughs> just uh, walking around as if he was in the spiral carpet. <laughs> he could barely it. see, just banging at anything. And it was, uh, like... We, we're gonna have to shave his head like we can't we can't do it so we just left him and eventually he's had it cut off but let's like say it got to a year and i'm like oh, i can't do another three months of this <laughs> well, well my little boy he, he just he loved it like he, he we cut it short um like we did like a, a, a free all over he's like no i want to go shorter so we shaved it all off and it just looked horrendous bless him <laughs> my mate's done my mate's done his little boy with a mohawk like oh, from the, like, cool. like like to to the to the skin and then a, and then a mohawk he's like he's my little boy's best mate and uh so he was walking around with the mohawk my little lad had hair all over the place like this the pair of them couldn't decide whether they were like sort of thugs or like <laughs> tortured artists <laughs> should have gone for the inverted <laughs> um, he can just shave the middle <laughs> and leave the sides. <laughs> that kid that uh, had his head on like Sven Goran Eriksson like, back in the day. Yeah, he just like shaved this part of his head. <laughs> and then th- there's the other kid uh, who he asked his dad for the Ronaldo cut, and then he gave him the R9 yeah, cut. Yeah, 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 brilliant. Yeah, I'll probably have my hair cut and look like Spike from Toy Story again. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. You did yeah, as well. Yeah. That was brilliant. <laughs> Oh, anyway, moving on, Tony. I mean, we spoke about lockdown and COVID enough. We'll, we'll go come into some more fun questions. So, uh, books. Are you a big book reader or? Um, yeah. Well, no. It's probably the answer. <laughs> like, like I like I like the idea of reading, but the time it takes. I'm I'm quite a slow reader. Um, and and I don't think I've got the time to sit and same. physically get into reading stuff. I'd love to. I'd love to be able to just 
sit and leisurely you know, flip through a book, nice coffee, glass of wine or whatever, do that. But for me, that's I can't relax that way. I, that's just like would, would put me straight to sleep. I'd relax too quickly and I'd not get the book finished. So I'd be like, <laughs> this is nonsense. But I've been reading bits and bobs like football stuff um, just to kind of keep up to date and go back through some old things like inverting the pyramid or whatever yes. and just keeping up on that. But in terms of actual literature, I've, I'll oh, be honest, really? I've not really been... Been been knocking out a lot there, I'm afraid. That's right. As you can see from Dave's, like, he's avid reader. Oh, mate. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, I've, I mean, look at my my bookcase. It's lovely, isn't it? So, it's invisible. Is that, is that, is that a guitar down there? Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Got, got a little song you want to play for us? Uh, it's, it's, no. it's I mean, I've been putting you on the spot here, mate. It's decoration. <laughs> it's, it's it's properly it's properly decorative. I, I worked out the other day that if I'd have played constantly from the day that I started playing. To now, I'd have played guitar for about twenty-five years. Wow! I thought he was going to say twenty-five maybe, minutes. Then, <laughs> nah, <laughs> it's probably about about th- three years in total. And nah, it's been sat there. We've been in this house for four years, so it's not <laughs> move it house to house. Just like yeah, that will be my touch that one day. It's it's one of those ones like where I'm going. Oh, I'll, I'll get back into it eventually. I'll get back into it, and you never do. You never do. like like reading. Going, I'll do it eventually, but nah. Don't get to it. So my recommendation for today is the Warnock documentary. Documentary, uh, autobiography. Uh, yeah. Autobiography. Yeah. Yeah. I was I thought that was going to be the joke for every pod. I didn't do it yesterday, so I thought I'd do it today. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, go on. What you got? What for reading? Yeah, go on. Bloody hell! Uh, I'm still up. listening to Eddie Hearn. Yeah. On his uh, his book, I'm at the, as you say that we were talking earlier about the decompression of in the car journey, and I, I've got an hour each way, so I'm I'm literally I can just go for audio books in like a week. Mm. So I'm still listening to that. That's really really good. Um, I'm just looking to the right of me now. Something good. Sam Allardyce's Big autobiography. Sam. That's pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. Pies, chips, centre arse. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that is, that's, that's actually pretty good because he's another one. That he's like working class, Dudley. Guy and it's just the way the way you go through, yeah. go through his kind of career. Mm. And I, I was a big fan of Sam Allardyce. And I was a bit gutsy when he got shafted for the England job. So, mm. let's with a napkin on his head, pint of, pint of wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I got a book today, Dave. Um, genuinely got a book today. Go uh, um, it's extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Cutlery book. <laughs> yeah, it's I, it's it's cats and lions. Um, no, uh, it's extreme ownership uh, by Jocko Will. What's it? Winnick, about? his name is. It's how the U.S. Navy SEALs lead and win. Uh, I started listening to it on an audio book. Read half of it via an actual book, and then I've carried on listening to an audio book. Actually, Joe prompts me to to carry on listening, so I've, I've got I've got probably another hour hour and a half to listen to. Um, but it's 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 very motivational. Um, especially in the position that I am at work, that it's all about uh, taking ownership for a lot of stuff. The only problem is, is the actual bloke narrates it, and he is an ex-army no. seal, and he has a very, very huff voice in times in, in times one and a half. It makes it quite difficult. <laughs> but apart from that, um, I get I get frustrated with audiobooks like, if they don't read them themselves. So yeah, it's like the Eddie Hearn one, he's he's narrating it, and then there was there's like a few that I've listened to where they and I'm like that's pretty cool. They narrate their own books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I said this on the on our you know, normal podcast. The Ian Wright one is the most frustrating thing I've ever listened to. Like everyone loves Wrighty, but he's got another guy in there, and it's he sounds similar but but different, and it just yeah. frustrates you the whole think, way through. I think for me because like I, I genuinely like autobiographies when I go when I go on holiday. I'm not a big fiction person. Um, then I generally do read when I'm away, but like for me, I I read it in in their voice, so to speak, or like I I, I can hear their voice. So like you said, when you when you and he's doing an anecdote, and it's it's literally a completely different person. It's like well, I, I just I can't get behind this. I, I really yeah, can't. Yeah. The um, the Alan Partridge audio books are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, chance to listen to that. that. That's, that's that's really really good like actually. Alan Who narrates those? In uh, a guy, um, Eddie. Uh, no, it's Alan Parrish. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Coop. <Cooper. laughs> yeah, I tried to listen. To, Eddie Earn. Uh, Imagine if Eddie Earn did Alan Parrish. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? I tried to listen. I tried to listen. Ian Wright does it, really? I tried to listen to the Matty Janssen one, but there was another guy on there as well, which I thought was shit. So I stopped listening. <laughs> Don't want that. Up the Don't nerd. Want that. <laughs> Poor Matt. <laughs> Up the nerd. Um, TV shows, movies. Are you a Netflix watcher, Tony? What do you do? Um, 
Yeah, well, I think well, like like everyone, we uh, we, we watched watched uh, we watched the last dance, got yeah. got the basketball out of the way, yeah. um, got sorted, um, caught up on the all or nothings. So yeah. did did Tottenham Spurs did the right. Dortmund one, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's in good. German, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so as that's a, probably as... the, that's probably the only thing I've read this this uh, <laughs> this lockdown <laughs> is the subtitles <laughs> of the year. <laughs> As as an uh, American football fan, have you watched any of the American football ones? Like the, the you know, there's a great one on there for the Eagles. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, the Cardinals ones on there as well, and I've I've missed out I've missed out this this year's um, Hard Knocks as well. I'm okay. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, there's there's quite a bit of stuff like um, Last Chance You is pretty decent as well. It's mm-hmm. kind of a almost like a guilty pleasure because I know it's not. Like, I don't know how do I describe this. It's not like a, a hardcore documentary because like, I no. again like they're easy watching, before. Mate. Yeah, like before before stand up, like I was a film a film lecturer, so I've had quite a varied career path, really. So I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a film wanker to be honest. Like I'm a uh, proper snob we when it comes to it. So I'm like, the opposite. so I'm like, I don't want to just sit and watch like Too Fast and Furious or whatever. I'd be so it's just nonsense. Like, but it's something that's hardcore. <laughs> but I just I just haven't got I just haven't got the I've got, I've got two kids under two. I just haven't got the, yeah. the brain for t- for something hardcore anymore now. So maybe maybe I'll give like Fast and Furious or Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll give that a go and just sit and just stare at it. Go just do explosions at me, please. Yeah. Maybe I'll just do that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I tell you, one thing that um, I've nearly finished watching. I'm actually I'm I'm literally the worst for films. I'm not going to go into it. We'll, we'll save it for another day when we haven't got a film geek on. Um, but oh, no, I, I'm not a film geek. I'm just saying, like, film, I, film wanker. Again. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for my anniversary, my wife bought me a um, one of those a top 100 films, scratch offs. When you watch them, scratch them off. Mm. Uh, and I went through it on stream, and it, 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 out of the top 100 films, I had seen three of them. So I'm really shit with films. Uh, and the three that I'd seen was Frozen. <laughs> and there was another two, and like, they weren't anything good. Um, but I've been watching a, a documentary on Prime uh, of Pistorius, Oscar Pistorius. Um, yeah. And it was it's it's it kind of does include kind of the incident, as we'll call it. But it, it also includes a lot of him when he was younger and like the, the, the struggles. And granted, yes, and whatever you think and however, whichever side of the door you want to stand, that's probably not the right thing to say, um, that he, it, it seriously is a really good story. Um, just take away the facts of what happened. Um, but that's really good. And also the, um, the price of, uh, the price of protest with uh, the, the callback, Colin. Um, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Yeah. Kaepernick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really good. I've only watched yeah. like the first 20 minutes of that, but that seems pretty good. That, that's on my watch list. Actually, I need to get uh, I need to get on that. Uh, there was a one. I don't know if it's still on Net, uh, Netflix anymore. But um, there was the, the the evolution of hip hop. They had that on uh, a little while ago, and it's like an eight parter or ten part or something. That's that's really wow. really good. If you get a chance to see that, if it's still on there, it's definitely worth it. It goes. I'm trying to think of all the, the, uh, the Doctor Dre one as well. Uh, oh, wow. um, yeah, I know what you mean. Like sort of. I have to watch some kind of leg- legacy or something, or yeah, but that was really good as well. I really yes. enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so, yeah, so some nice stuff on there. But as I say, it's it's um, just just keep it on top of it, isn't it? Yeah. Like... There's a there's another really good documentary for about this guy from Kazakhstan. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. and he, he goes over to America. Like really, it's really it's quite interesting. Texas I mean, door. weird but great interesting. Yeah. He is a mish. <laughs> well, you've seen it too. Yeah. <laughs> Have you watched that Louis one? Theroux? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate. I tell you what, I got caught watching some of that stuff the other week, and there was some weird stuff. that Some of his old stuff as well. Some really weird documentaries he put out. Yeah, that too. And finally, Tony, podcasts. I know you sort of recently, or fairly recently, started your own. So how, how's that been going? Have you been enjoying that as well? Yeah, it's been good, man. We've been um, so we're maybe only what fourteen, fifteen episodes or something in now. We're not full you know, hardcore like you guys, like <laughs> knocking out for a few years. But we we sort of got our own little little sort of area of the of the podcast world and just trying to get our own style down and kind of approaching stuff differently. Like so, Matt's Matt was sort of in the same position as me. Like his background's journalism and, and wrestling. So again, his industry went tits up over the summer and uh, i just started youtubing so and we would always back and forth the idea of doing some football manager stuff and he sort of went well you know should we just try it now like there's 
good a time as any, I guess, to, not, to get man? content out. Um, so we're like, all right, fair enough, so we'll do it. So, yeah, we enjoy it, man. It's, it's nice. It's just something a bit different, and um, people seem to be enjoying it, which I guess is 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 nice. And if the worst out is that me and him just have a nice chat once or twice a week, that's fine. That's like touching base with a mate, so a bit of mental health help in there. So exactly, yeah. pretty Absolutely. decent, pretty decent yeah. with that. And then just in terms of... Uh, of other stuff, I'm, I'm getting caught up with the zonal marking. Obviously, I'm, I'm yourselves. I'm, I'm fully caught up with now as well. Um, and then, and then this, like, just as I said to you before we started recording, like, I actually watched the first one and I've I got obviously the last one to catch up on. But I do think it's great that stuff like this and these sort of conversations are happening. And and for me, podcasting is is such a great platform for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, to do this on YouTube is, is fantastic as well. So yeah, just for people to chat about. And be honest to go, look, look, life's a bit shit right now and we're all feeling it. It's nice to know that we're all in the same boat and we're not as alone as we really think we all are. Um, so, yeah, so props to you guys for putting this on, man, genuinely. Quick Thanks, question man. about yours. Just really quick, Dave, I know you're eager. Um, yeah. Who does your naming of your titles? Because <laughs> I have been very impressed recently, especially with the basketball. Like, yeah, yeah, that's quite yeah. a niche film as well. Um, but, like... Some of these, yeah. So some so of these we, titles are just tremendous. So we bounce them back and forth. So we we tend to pick a theme for 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 the episodes as we go through, um, and we just like we just puns. So the one that I was very impressed with that I came up with last week was um, was our, our Germany special, uh, which ended up as "Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer." Yeah, I was quite good. happy with that. So <laughs> one for but, Dave, fire in the AD Boothroyd. Yes, that was good. Yeah. Read the fathers out of it. <laughs> we had uh, we we had we had one that was scrapped, which was when Eddie Howe got sacked. We had loads. We had um, how much is that Eddie Howe in the window? Oh, sorry, Eddie, how much is that doggy in the window? Yeah. Um, what else uh, we had? So just loads and like we just knocking. There's some there's some stuff that just gets knocked back straight away, which is just so poor. Uh, like what what I had limp buskets was one that was that was vetoed this. Uh, this week um i can see that being a podcast itself to be fair <laughs> yeah so but i mean you know like i guess my background in comedy is, is background in journalism we're gonna get get some puns going on and um yeah we usually get it after about i think six hours i, I think we're doing it about about eight or nine ten maybe we'll get the gold and then we'll just go yeah. like yeah that's it yeah move on um but yeah we try not to get Try to think too much of it, and then he, he does he does a sort of his intro raps sort of on the day as well. So again, that's sort of something that we don't find out until we hit record. So yeah. again, it's quite it's quite nice. We don't overthink it, which I think is probably the the best way of doing it. So uh, I'm going to just shout out two more. Uh, mm-hmm. I am Legan and only. That, I think mean, that's very good. Oh, I quite like that one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Mark, that Matt. curb your enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, that, um, was ba- that, that was almost going to be the title wow. of the podcast, actually. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we were going to put that as the title of the podcast, and then we thought yeah. that would need something a little bit more sort of generic uh, to catch it all. But um, but yeah, no, he, he's. I think we, we should probably run a league table, to be honest, to work out who's winning who's the, the titles. I think, I think I'm just edging it, but it'll yeah, it's so, close. It's going to be close. Bold statement. Well, we'll be the judge of that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. As I say, it's, uh, it's going to go to VAR at the end. I, I have to admit, I have to admit, I am um, the 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 base the, the, the basketball. The, sorry, the basketball one this week really kind of made me open my eyes to it. I was like, that's, that's clever. I love that film. One of my favourite films, which is shows you my my film yeah, history, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's so great film. It, made, it made me look, and I was like, oh, I've got to mention this when he comes on because yeah. some of these are just tremendous. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. The... And I love the fact that the ones that I've picked were Matt's. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that makes me feel really bad, but you know, they're good. Totally the winning. other ones are good. So. We work hard on our ones, uh, episode yeah. 168. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this week's save yeah. reveals. Yeah. I was gonna say, let, let's, let's see where you are in 150 episodes time. Let's see how clev- uh, funny they are then, and then, then we'll be the answer. Right? Uh, I've got, I think um, Matt tried at the start, didn't he? Matt was really, really trying at the start, but now he just doesn't care. Nah, he's just giving up now. It's just yeah. like, this is as good as it's going to get. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, most we're... weeks we forget which number we're on. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. It's been fantastic, obviously, to talk to you about career, life, family, and obviously what you do 
in your spare time as well, man. So, it, I mean, we'll, I haven't done this with anybody else, but if anyone obviously wants to find you online, what, where are the best places to find you? Name of the podcast, your YouTube channel and so on. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, a pleasure for coming on. I appreciate you guys getting me on. It's always great to chat and stuff and catch up with you. Um, Twitter is at Tony Jameson. Um, YouTube is Tony Jameson FM. And I guess that's kind of where we're at. Podcast is Football Manager Therapy. If anyone's searching for that, uh, feel free to tweet puns that may end up as, as show titles, and, and we can make this a three three horse race for the league. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think Joe would be very good at that. Joe, Joe, your, your DMs are from Joe are just going to be lit up yeah. tonight. It's going to be like, here we go, here's another one. Do it, man. Do it. Eventually we'll start getting guests on and we'll just get them to come up with a short tale to take the pressure <laughs> off us. <laughs> yes, of course you can be a guest, but you have to come up with a rap and a song title and a title. That's the way it um, goes, my there, friend. There was one, I, was, I can't remember what I was listening to, and it, it was Perlo, not Furlough. And I was like, oh, wow, fucking... that's I was good. like, genius. I'm not going to take credit for it, but it, no, I, was that's like, good. I, I like it. I like it. It's like a fantasy football name, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot, everyone, for listening. As always, uh, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the We Shoot FM channel. Obviously, with these uh, lockdown podcasts are going to be continuing for many weeks to come. Let us know uh, your thoughts about today's podcast in the comment section. If you've got any questions, of course, we can ask them on future podcasts as well. But look after yourselves. As I said at the start of the uh, the podcast, links uh, to help or the We Shoot uh, FM email address, if you'd prefer to do it privately, is all in the description down below. But uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, and we'll see you all very, very soon.